The principle of operation for bus bar protection primarily relies on the differential protection method. This method is designed to detect faults on bus bars and associated equipment by measuring the currents flowing in and out of the bus bar. The bus bar protection system operates on Kirchhoff's first law, which states that the sum of currents entering a junction must equal the sum of currents leaving it. Therefore, under normal conditions, the total current flowing into the bus bar should equal the total current flowing out. Any discrepancy indicates a fault. The bus bar differential protection relays compare the currents entering and leaving the bus bar. If there is a faulty dot G, a short circuit, the current entering the bus bar will differ from the current leaving, resulting in a differential current that exceeds a predetermined threshold. This triggers the protection system to isolate the faulty section by tripping the relevant circuit breakers. There are primarily two types of differential protection relays used for bus bar protection. First low impedance differential protection, this is the most commonly used method. It is sensitive and can adapt to complex schemes, allowing for operation even during substation reconstruction. Secondly, high impedance differential protection, some system operators still use this method. It is typically less sensitive than the low impedance method but has advantages in terms of simplicity and cost effectiveness. Bus bar protection systems may also incorporate additional tripping criteria to enhance reliability and security, such as check zones, to prevent false trips due to malfunctioning disconnectors. Current direction supervision ensures that all currents in the bus are moving in the expected direction. Dynamic topology replication, a modern bus bar protection system should dynamically replicate the bus topology and include design flexibility to accommodate various bus arrangements. Bus bar protection operates by continuously monitoring the currents flowing through the bus bar and using differential protection principle, principles to detect faults, ensuring the fast and selective isolation of any faulty sections. Bus bar differential protection configuration can be categorized into two main types, one centralized and second decentralized arrangements. Centralized arrangement, numerical centralized bus bar protection is typically found in new substations or in retrofitted old conventional bus bar protection systems where the cabling is still in good condition. The amount of cabling in a centralized arrangement is approximately the same as in conventional arrangements. Advantages of a centralized arrangement include easy adoption of functionality and simple arrangements of inputs-outputs. It allows for fast and easy connection with substation automation systems, which facilitates quick fault analysis and monitoring. Decentralized arrangement, in the past, bus bar protections were constructed centrally, requiring considerable interconnection between various protection panels, which made engineering, commissioning, and maintenance time consuming and costly. Nowadays, decentralized bus bar protection is more common in new substations, especially at higher voltage levels 330 kV and above. This type reduces the amount of cabling and mitigates electromagnetic compatibility EMC issues due to the use of fiber optics. The choice between centralized and decentralized configurations often depends on local conditions and the specific requirements of the transmission system. Special bus bar arrangements components and their protection, here are the key points to remember, and fault protection, this functionality is crucial for protecting zones located between a circuit breaker and a current transformer when the CB is open. It aims to handle small zone faults that the bus bar protection BBP cannot clear on its own. This protection sends a trip signal to the line distance protection at the remote end to eliminate the remaining fault. Dead zone blind spot, the section between the CT and CB is termed the dead zone. End fault protection is activated only when the CB is open. When the CB is closed, this function is not in play, allowing for a fast fault clarification. Faults in bus couplers, the presence of CTs on either side of bus sections and couplers is crucial for ensuring that faults can be detected and cleared. The strategy used can be selective or unselective, depending on the arrangement of the CTs. Protection during on-load bus bar changeover, the bus bar protection system must be capable of detecting faults occurring during an on-load bus bar changeover, ensuring that the connected bays receive appropriate trip commands. Bus coupler time delay, a time delay is necessary for bus coupler operations, which should be shorter than the delay of zone 2 distance protection, typically ranging from 0.15 to 0.3 seconds. Policy for isolator alarm, the switchgear positional information is crucial for determining the primary arrangement of each bus bar section, and policies may vary on how to respond to isolator alarms. These strategies and components are essential to ensure that bus bar protection systems can effectively manage various scenarios and maintain the stability and safety of the transmission system. Circuit breaker failure protection BFP is a local backup protection function that operates selectively in the event that a circuit breaker fails to interrupt fault current despite receiving a tripping impulse from its protection. The goal of BFP is to minimize the number of bays tripped, ensuring that only the necessary sections are affected. 
Several types of BFP schemes exist, and they typically rely on the occurrence of two signals within a specified time frame, an external start signal and confirmation of an overcurrent condition, or alternatively, a circuit breaker contact signal. The external start signal is usually triggered by a trip command from any protection function, such as a distance relay or a differential relay, depending on the type of feeder. The BFP operates based on the following principles, confirmation of overcurrent, the main criterion for the operation of the BFP is the detection of an overcurrent through the circuit breaker. This ensures that the circuit breaker has indeed failed to operate. Circuit breaker position criteria, the position of the circuit breaker open or closed is also monitored to confirm whether a fault condition exists. Retrip function, if the initial trip cannot clear the fault, the BFP can initiate a retrip of the circuit breaker after a short time delay typically less than 100 milliseconds. If this retrip is also unsuccessful, a second stage of the BFP will trip all circuit breakers connected to the same busbar section. Contingency arrangements, BFP schemes can be combined with other protection functions, such as distance protection, to ensure that if BFP is unavailable, alternative measures can still provide protection. Busbar protection systems protect substation busbars and associated equipment from the consequences of short circuits and earth faults. In the long ago early days of power system development no separate protection device was used for busbar protection. Remote endline protection served as the main protection for busbar faults. As a result of increased network short circuit capacity, dedicated differential relays for busbar protections have been applied to minimize the tripping time of the protection and to limit the damage caused by high fault currents. Today, busbar protection systems are used. And even double busbar protections may be applied. The generic transmission system's key issues i.e. reliability, operability, maintainability and cost need to be addressed when designing a substation and selecting a busbar configuration and consequently a busbar protection scheme. At EHVHB levels, solutions that provide a high degree of reliability can be justified. A busbar protection system should dynamically replicate the bus topology. It should also contain sufficient design flexibility to protect all existing bus arrangements. In general, the main requirements for bus bar protection include, security probability of an unnecessary protection operation for through faults out of zone faults is low. Dependability probability that the protection will not operate for a fault on the bus in zone faults is low. Speed high speed operation is required to limit equipment damage and to preserve system transient stability. Sensitivity the ability to detect and clear high resistance faults. Selectivity the ability to isolate only the faulty bus section. Purpose, busbar protection systems safeguard substation busbars and associated equipment from short circuits and earth faults. Historical context, initially, no separate protection devices were used for busbar protection. Remote endline protection served as the main protection for busbar faults. Evolution, increased network short circuit capacity led to the use of dedicated differential relays for busbar protection. These relays minimize tripping time and limit damage from high fault currents. Modern systems often use double busbar protections. Design considerations, key issues, reliability, operability, maintainability, and cost. High reliability solutions are justified at EHVHV levels. Busbar protection systems should dynamically replicate bus topology and offer design flexibility to protect all bus arrangements. Main requirements, security low probability of unnecessary protection operation for through faults out of zone faults. Dependability low probability of failure to operate for a fault on the bus in zone faults. Speed high speed operation to limit equipment damage and preserve system transient stability. Sensitivity, ability to detect and clear high resistance faults. Selectivity, ability to isolate only the faulty bus section. Bus differential protection, based on Kirchhoff's first law. The sum of currents entering and leaving a bus must be zero. Protects a bus with multiple feeders by ensuring the sum of incoming currents equals the sum of outgoing currents. Fault detection, an internal fault in zone fault is indicated if the current sum is not zero. External faults can cause high currents that may saturate CT's current transformers, leading to false differential currents. Challenges, CT saturation can cause incorrect relay operation by providing false current magnitudes. Manufacturers use algorithms to maintain relay stability and prevent unnecessary operations during CT saturation. Kirchhoff's current law, the vector sum of all currents at a node or bus is zero. Application in bus protection, current transformers monitor currents entering and leaving a bus. Bus differential protection compares incoming and outgoing currents. Any significant difference indicates a bus fault that needs quick isolation. Bus differential relays, detect differential current and trip associated breakers to isolate faults. 
Do not require magnitude or phase angle compensation like transformer differential relays. Do not need to handle magnetizing in rush currents. Implementation, simple schemes can parallel CTs from all circuit breakers on the bus. All paralleled CTs must have the same ratio to ensure accurate current comparison. Relay setup, a simple bus differential scheme can use an instantaneous overcurrent element with a sensitive pickup, assuming no current flows to the relay.